January 13th, 2018. The city of Charlotte in North Carolina would endure a tragedy, a tragedy that would rock this city to its very foundation. It is said that you are to be judged for who you are, not for what you've done. But what if what you've done is a reflection of who you truly are? What if what you've done is a reflection of who you truly are? This story begins in Fullerton, California. November 28, 1983, Christina Treadway would be born. Upon being born, her biological parents would actually give her away, in which she would end up being adopted by a woman named Patricia Treadway. Although she was adopted, she was treated no different than one of her own. She would navigate through life and grow into a young adult. The year is now 2007, and Christina is around 24 years old. She has transitioned from Fullerton, California, to the city of Charlotte in North Carolina. Also in the year of 2007, she would meet basically her entire future. She would meet a man who goes by the name of Antoine Miller. During the course of dating, they would quickly find out that they were very compatible. In her young adult life, Antoine seemed to complement the areas in which she was lacking. Antoine was hardworking, whereas she kind of hopped job to job. In Christina's mind, these jobs were only temporary because she had dreams of being in the big lights. She wanted to be a singer, often turning to social media to show her talent. Time has passed and this relationship with Antoine is flourishing and they were actually planning a trip to Ohio in which they would attend a game. Only life had other plans. Shortly before this trip, she would find out that they would be pregnant with their first child. The world would make way for Isaiah Miller a young prince to carry the family's name. Three years into Isaiah Miller's life, they would welcome another child. December 16th, 2014, the world would make way for Ilea Miller. And from birth, her and her brother would be inseparable, often referring to each other as best friends. A few years would pass and it would now be the year of 2016. The family has now moved to Orlando, Florida. Their son Isaiah would begin attending school at Rosemont Elementary. It would be here that he would begin his journey in school. He would receive perfect attendance as well as being noted to have very excellent behavior. The family would spend shortly under a year there, but they would ultimately end back up in Charlotte, North Carolina. At this point, Christina seems to have a loving family, beautiful children, children that have grown extremely intelligent, even at a young age. Hey, Leah. Hey, Zaya. Hey. Hey. Hey, this is a brief little interview so we can get to know you better, okay? I got a Isaiah, how old are you? I got a drawbridge. I can't hear you. Six money. I got Leah. A drawbridge. Cool. Nice drawbridge. How old are you? Say I'm my drawbridge. Hey, drawbridge. How old are you? Um, two. Nice, nice two. Okay, Isaiah, what's your favorite food? Um, pineapples. What's your favorite food, Leah? Um, grapes. Ooh, nice choice. Isaiah, what's your favorite color? Um, red. Red? What's your favorite color? Um, pink. Ooh, that's a good color. Okay, um, Leah, can you tell me who your best friend is? Zaya! Aww. Zay, can you tell me who your best friend is? Um, Leah. Are you just saying that because she's hugging you? Mm -hmm. That's your best friend? Uh, and That's adorable. And Chase. And Chase, okay. Chase is your best friend. Okay. If, Zaya, what, would, what do you want to be when you grow up? Policeman, Leah, what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, a police officer. You want to be a police officer? Yeah. Both of you want to be police officers? Yeah, 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 yeah. To protect the city from crime? Yeah. And bad guys? Mm hmm I get to fight the bad guys. From the outside looking in, it seemed as if Christina's life 
was almost perfect. She had a loving family, a beautiful household. She had a family support system through her mother. Everything in her life seems to be on point. But things were soon to come that would question her happiness. A normal, cheery, and happy-go-lucky Christina would begin to leave some disturbing posts on her social media. June 7th, 2017. Christina Treadway would go to her social media and she would leave a post saying that she was too happy, so life smacked her in the face. But amongst the many eyes on social media, this was just another post. Someone else ranting on the internet. You know, when you see posts like this, it's not something that you immediately take seriously. You just figure someone's ranting. Little did people know that that was her first silent cry for help. But it was just another post that was set aside due to the outward appearance of her lifestyle. As I said, social media would show that everything was great. Okay, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough. Today I'm going to do the hot pepper challenge. It's in my hand. Okay. And I got a cup of water if it gets super spicy. I already know it's going to get super spicy. Uh-huh. Keep going. Let's do this. In three, two, one. Okay. Play for me, guys. Everybody. My whole family. All right. Let's do it. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Um, teacher, I have a question. Uh, well, is, is the me what? Um, where's the brain? Um, the brain is right on your head. What does it do? Um, it makes you talk and walk. Oh, okay, thanks, teacher. Hey, you're welcome. Don't talk in class because it's a very quiet class. Okay. December 18th, 2017. Another post would arise on her social media. This post would detail that she had the worst week of her life ever. But whatever Christina was going through in her life at that point, she managed to put it aside. Because after all, tis the season to be jolly and Christmas was coming up. So the family would welcome the holiday and they would celebrate it as normal. Everything seems okay in these pictures. Everyone's smiling having a good time. The kids seem happy, but the truth was that underneath those photos, something else was brewing. Christina wasn't okay. January 6, 2018, Christina Treadway would take to her social media once again in form of a cryptic message. It would simply be a photo that would be uploaded. The photo itself was self-explanatory, so there was no need for a caption. This was undoubtedly a look inside of her head. And seven days after this post, Christina would do the unthinkable. January 13th, 2018. Shortly after 5.30 p.m. on that day, they would be dispatched to a location. The police would be responding to a call that someone was about to end their life there. But when they showed up, they were too late. Upon arriving, they would discover the body of Christina Treadway. Due to the nature of the call and the circumstances at hand, it would be immediately ruled self-inflicted. But proper protocol in these cases is to still collect evidence, regardless of the situation. So they photographed the scene collect any potential evidence and this leads them to Christina Chadway's home. Now the police were going to her home as a follow-up. After identifying who she was, the next step is to go to her home and look for potential clues there. But when they walk inside, they discover way more than they actually came for. Police believe that Christina Treadway killed her three-year-old daughter and seven-year-old son. It happened last night on the 2100 block of Sebastiana Drive. MC Charlotte's Kendall Morris joins us live from CMPD's Freedom Division. Kendall, have police said anything about a motive for this terrible story? 
Not at this point, Xavier. We still don't have any idea what led up to this tragedy. Neighbors say that they just saw the children playing outside yesterday afternoon and they didn't have any idea that anything was wrong until police started filling their streets. All night long, I dreamt of a huge tsunami wave. I could see it coming, and it was bigger than skyscrapers. But it was like waiting for me to move out of the way. The news was telling the opposite coast that they were safe. Funny thing is, I woke up twice and went back to sleep in the same dream. I googled the meaning of the dream, and I'm not satisfied with the answer. Hi, I'm Tina. No, Tina, mommy. Okay, I'm Tina, mommy. I'm sorry. And who are you? Um, I'm Mia. It's difficult for neighbors in this close community to understand. A typical day around here is children playing, um, families walking their dogs. That's why this scene Saturday night came as a surprise. Police taped off the house, investigating what led to the deaths of the two children who lived inside. That's at the core of this investigation, what would uh, cause somebody obviously to be so despondent that they would want to take their own life and then take the lives of their children. <laughs> that was disgusting. Don't do that ever again. It's time to do your hair. <laughs> what are you eating tonight? I'm eating curry chicken and rice. Do you like it? Yeah, it tastes pretty good. Hey, it was hard. It was really hard. Um, I just remember just seeing the little girl and her little pigtails kind of bouncing around with her running and her brother riding on his bike. Neighbors say the children were always smiling. They didn't have any clue that something wasn't right. It just seemed to be a loving family, um, just a typical family. You know, on the outside looking in, it's nothing that I could ever say that anything was wrong. And while people who live close by are still questioning why this happened, they're now focusing on how they can come together through this tragedy. It would be ultimately concluded that Christina Treadway took the life of her children as well as her own. After this situation occurred, Christina Treadway's family would come forward and they would say that she was actually in an abusive relationship and that she was in fear for her life. Christina Treadway's last known text would be to her friend. This text message would detail that she needed a place to stay somewhere warm and safe. Given the circumstances, the family feels like maybe the whole story hasn't been told and something sinister might be lurking beneath the surface. They would turn to the media in hopes to tell their side of the story. They were loved so very much in life and they're loved so very much in death also. That's the quivering voice of an emotional mother and grandmother still searching for answers why her daughter would take her own life and those of her two beautiful kids. Our daughter has never shown any signs of being depressed. I want people to know that she was a loving mother, that she, in that she would not have done this if she wasn't so trapped and so alone. We are grieving too. We've lost three, just like they lost two. It doesn't make it any less because they're her grandchildren or his kids. They were our grandchildren too. This story is truly a sad situation. The family of Christina Treadway would detail that she never had a history of mental health. She never had problems. She never showed any sign that she was getting ready to snap. But just because you don't recognize the signs doesn't mean that they aren't there. Sometimes people grapple with things on their own, maybe even cry on their own. It's very important that you make sure to check up on people. 
Just ask them how they are. And if they say okay, double back and ask the question again. You truly never know what someone is going through. When it comes to Antoine, Antoine was accused of being an abuser. He was accused of running a negative household. But Antoine actually ended up taking a lie detector test in which he was exonerated. He was asked, did he ever beat her? Did he have anything to do with this? He passed the test, so I guess that means he's telling the truth. He would detail that he received a text that night. Basically, it was Christina telling him that she's sorry for what she's done and she hopes that she can be forgiven. An autopsy would be conducted on the bodies of Ilea and Isaiah. You know, I'll never understand fully how this happened. I mean, I know mental health has to have, you know, a big place in this, but you know, I'm trying to tread lightly here. For her to be able to, you know, take her children with her is a completely different thing. And I want to specify that during this autopsy, there were ligature marks found on Isaiah's hands, which indicate that when this transpired, he was tied up. And that sounds particularly heinous, you know, Again, I'm trying to tread lightly because at the end of the day, I know that she had a family. What she did was totally wrong. But at the same time, you just, you never know what someone is struggling with. You never know the full extent of the pain that's lurking beneath the surface. The lives of Aaliyah and Isaiah being taken at such a young age you know, being taken out due to pain that had nothing to do with them. It's sad. You know, there are no words to explain this situation. I've tried over and over. If you feel like you have no way out, if you're struggling with mental health, you're depressed, you just need someone to talk to, I will be linking a number in the description as well as pinning it to the top of the comments. You can get help. Don't be afraid to reach out and call the number. It's there for you. Now I know that this case is, is touchy-feely. You know, I know there are gonna be people on this side of the fence and there's gonna be people on the other. I know that there are some people right now that they're upset and the other half of you can actually sympathize with her and what actually transpired. I'm here to tell the stories, bring to you, you know, just the background of their life. You know, I try my best not to pass judgment. I know that mental health is a real thing. I know that people battle inside their heads on a daily basis. At the end of the day, three people lost their lives that day. Aaliyah, Isaiah, and Christina. What are you doing in there? Uh, because I was writing a song for you. You was writing a song for me? Yeah, because, because it's called Mommy, I Love You. Oh my gosh, I want to hear it. Go ahead. Okay. I love you, Mommy. You're so beautiful. I always love you. Oh. I always love you. Are you so precious? You not the meanest mom that I never seen. You so beautiful. I always love you. I always love you and every heart I love. I always trust you, all I love you all the time. I just love you, you can always love me. Oh, come here, you're so cute.
cute. Oh, you wrote that for me? Mm-hmm. Thank you, sweetheart. 